Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. That was unusually timed. I wonder if I have to play that back. See? That wasn't me. That was the compressor hissing. Sure. The compressor. Yeah, it was a little air out, you know. Okay, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Anyways, behind us here is Eleanor, my 1956 Chop Chop Beetle. This is the custom car that I built from junk. Anything that I could salvage, we put it together. And right now we're salvaging some more stuff. What have you got there? Tubes. You've got tubes. This is actually an air conditioner copper line. Now something that you guys watched me do in the last video was I set up the hood latch system. And one of the things that I discovered is the 1956 Beatles hood latch release cable is actually a steel cable that's welded into the body that's painted the same color as the body that I failed to install and Earl didn't get to paint. Yep. So we're going to salvage some copper and we're going to install it and not paint it and deliberately make it obvious so that way you guys can see it. So when the hood is open, it's going to be a beautiful copper thing, as long as it stays coppery, but eventually it should get the patina color on it. And if it stays dry, it'll probably turn more of a, a brownish purpley kind of red, rather than being bright orange like it is. And it should not turn green, unless of course it's subject to a lot of moisture, like the Statue of Liberty is for example. But anyways, that's where we're at, so licky, likey, comment, subscribe, don't forget to plug the link place, get updates every time I up video. Check out Doug Shit Down there for all my different social media links. And I think that's it for now, so go ahead. And watch through that intro. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi. <laughs> I must to ask you a question. I'll shave it for later. Ha ha ha. Mais oui. Ha ha. A plant. <laughs> Before we get to work in here, let's try to cover up all this beautiful paint to get beat. Last thing I need is to destroy my paint. And I have to listen to it from Earl. <laughs> Okay, this copper here has a nice contrast against Eleanor's paint. And if in the event you actually got to see it in direct sunlight, you would probably agree even more so. Right now things are a little flat and she's reflecting an absolutely blue, pristine sky, which makes her look more of a mint color. Kind of interesting. It's almost the same color that Mint Mobile uses for their, uh, <laughs> for their logos and such. And no, they're not sponsoring me nor endorsing me in any way. But let's go ahead and get under the hood here and get things covered up. Straighten this line out a little bit because it's got to get some curves to it. And I don't want to have a whole bunch of bumps and hoopties in it. So I got to get it as straight as possible. So when I put it on the car, it doesn't look stupid. I think it needs to be a little curved on the bottom though. So that way it kind of goes through that way to where it needs to be. All right, let's try that. Pretty damn close. That's not too awfully bad in here. It's a little loose. I think the original tube is supposed to be a slightly larger diameter than that. And what I'll do is I'll 3D print a little bushing to slip in there. I'll take a couple measurements and make that work. But otherwise, the line runs up behind the apron. It's gonna need a lot of bending back here. But it's supposed to follow the contour of those uh, bolt holes for the fenders. So it'll run up along the inside of this ridge, up and over the top, and down behind the hood spring. And a 56 would not have a hood spring. That's actually a later model Beetle. I think they started those in the early 60s at some point. But anyway, we'll run this up and over, and then behind that, and then up in here, I'm going to have to drill a hole that runs into the passenger compartment. So that way the pull handle can uh, be reached by the driver. Now this is Eleanor's original pull handle. The cable is long since broken. And the funny thing about these is the handle is actually bonded to the cable. So I'll have to rebond the new cable to it. Now you're supposed to replace the entire thing all as one replaceable unit, but I'm not going to do that in this case. I just use miscellaneous wire 
and I rewire everything in my Volkswagens exactly the same way, whether it be for the heater tubes or whether it be for um, for a pull handle like this. I, yeah, like I said, I just run a new wire. But we're going to try to reuse this. I'm going to clean it up. There's a lot of tree sap on it. That's what you're looking at there. But otherwise, the knob appears to be in some pretty good shape. It's just really dirty. So I'll clean it up, maybe sand it a little bit, and I'll make it look nice. But I'd rather put it back because it's original. And there's not too much on this car that got to be original, that stayed original, that's uh, being retained. So that's the reason why I'd like to keep this. All right, this has to be bent upwards to match that bolt holes for the fender. I come up and over this way. Actually, you know what? It almost kind of lays in there. It feels like it's natural, like it's supposed to be. Kind of surprising how this uh, copper just wants to lay in the right position, almost like this was meant to be. Well, I'm going to have to cut the end of it off for sure. I can't bend it any further. Yeah, I really like the way that laid in there. I'm going to need some kind of clips or something to retain it, but I'll come up with something. I might just glue something down right to the back side of these bolt holes. Yeah, we'll see. But somewhere over here is where I need to drill that hole that goes through to the passenger compartment. And I'm not sure the exact location, but I do have Eleanor's old front end, which is rusted to hell, but should give us a few hints as to where that tube is supposed to be. And here's what's left of Eleanor's old front end. You can see the speedometer tube that I forgot to take off of there also. I'll have to be making one of those however I decide to do it. Not quite sure yet. But I can see the hole right here, which I believe is where that pole is supposed to come through. So, approximately in that location is where we're going to cut a hole and just drill something out. And I guess it doesn't need to be too perfect, it just needs to be good enough. But the tube would ordinarily run up and along this here. You can see where the old hood prop was, and I believe this was welded into the back of the hood prop. It came down this way and then ran diagonally across. So that's about what we're going to emulate with some copper tubing. But yeah, that's what's left of Eleanor's front end for anyone that's asking. Not much left of that car at all. There's the other piece that I cut off the front, which I didn't even need to cut off because I didn't end up using any of it anyway. <laughs> right, chickens? Right, chickens? Are you good, chickens? Yeah, I brought Biddy inside because Biddy was bad. Yep, and I see a big pile of eggs in there. I'm gonna have to clean them up. <laughs> All right, I decided the best way to drill that hole is gonna be to come up under here. And I just happened to uh, find a dimple that is approximately in the right spot where it needs to be. And that's kind of a surprise to me. I can actually run my finger through and feel it right there. So I center punch the center of the dimple and I'm ready to uh, drill it out. So you guys better get your butt puckering pants ready because uh, it's about that time to drill into this beautiful body once again. Here it is. And I can see daylight. Look at that. That's where my pull's gonna go through. And in here, we're gonna install, I'll probably 3D print. I'm out of focus here, come on. Focus, you dick. Here it is, I'll probably 3D print a nice collar to go in here, maybe with two little bolts that go on either side of it, make it look nice. Like it was factory, like it was meant to be. Now I'm gonna have to clean the burrs off the other side. Yeah, there it is, got some burrs over here. Not too bad, actually. That stuff I need to clean up, and of course it's impossible to get a drill in there. So I couldn't clean it up with that. Gonna have to do it by hand. All right, there we go. I worked that out there. Just used a file and gently cleaned off the burrs. So now we got a nice hole. 
Now I can cut the copper outer tube here and uh, slip it through that hole and see approximately where this thing is going to lay. All right, I think we're on the right track here. Look at that nice copper running up and under, over the top of the fender, and then through a little hole into the passenger compartment right down there. I'll 3D print a nice bushing to go around that. I might even drill the hole a little bigger if I have to to make the bushing fit properly. And then the copper tubing runs right into the passenger compartment. So that should work out real nicely. Down there is my wire. That's what we're gonna run on the inside of the tubing. This little latch here on the front always fascinated me and I demonstrated in one of the earlier videos. But if you pull the cable tight just a little bit, it closes the latch. That's right, when you pull the cable, it closes the latch. But when you pull it a little more, it opens the latch. So how this works is it's a, it's a simple fail-safe. There's always a little bit of tension on that cable. And the event that the cable snaps and it loses its tension, it would simply fail to the open position. So normally it would be in the closed position. And cable snaps, it opens up wide. So that's the theory anyway. Of course, anything can break and anything can happen. But that's what you're looking at here and how that thing works. Well, the duck man got into the old uh, creativity juice. And this is the stuff that he has when the haters hate him most. And I decided to start sticking some fenders and stuff on while I was having a break to see what she would look like. And this is the first time I've seen these fenders painted and on this car. It's just the fronts. I don't have the rears on there this, this second, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm overwhelmed. Just seriously overwhelmed. I mean, I'm like overcome with emotion that I don't even know how to react. I am just in love with this car all over again. There's still some things that I have to work out and I just want everything on this car just to be perfect. So I'm only going to work on it as quickly as I feel like. And what that means to anybody that wants to see me hurry up and get this thing done too fucking bad. It's my car and I'm going to do it my way. And I'm going to work on it only as fast as I can without fucking things up. And those fenders are probably not even going to stay on it when I push this thing back in the garage. But there it is. And I don't know why it looks so low. That thing is just so much lower than I ever remembered it going. I don't know what's different. But that fender rubs the inside of, or the tire rather, rubs the inside of that fender like heavily. But I'll never ever drive it like that. I mean, that's just, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but those fenders really give this car her shape. Just, wow. All I have to say, just a huge wow. Special thanks to Earl over there at Classic Car Creations. You can find him by going to duckshit.net forward slash ccc or search for Classic Car Creations in your favorite browser or your YouTube application and you'll find his YouTube channel. He had an entire series where he was working on this car rebuilding it and this car would have never looked like this had it have not been for his work and his input and the help of his people. This thing is just uh... It's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. Wow, I shouldn't have waited that long to put these fenders on. And of course, they're not on here permanently yet. I just stuck three bolts in each one just to get it hung, to get a look at it. I guess you could say, yeah, Miss Eleanor is hung. <laughs> Welcome back to another exciting Triple E video. And that's right, we're not calling her Eleanor anymore because people don't know how to spell it. And they tend to use the wrong friggin' name for a certain Mustang that has no relation to this car. So Eleanor is now officially just known as Triple E. And I can handle that. Good old Triple E right here. Because Eleanor is spelled with three E's, guys. I don't know why anybody doesn't get that. <laughs> if your spell checker is spelling it wrong, then your spell checker needs to be sued. And not by me, but by the Halicki family for misrepresenting their trademark. This is Eleanor, with an E at the end. Eleonore, Eleonore, if you want to put it that way, I guess. I don't know if that's quite accurate in any language, but nonetheless, Triple E is here 
And she's beautiful. All right, well, I can see these fenders are going to be a work hazard. <laughs> Still working on this copper line under here, and I don't think I'm happy with it. You know, I thought I was, but uh, after having a little of my creativity beverage, looking at the whole thing, and the, I mean, it looks great, but functionally, the cable is getting bound up inside of it. And I think the reason is, is because that tube is actually smaller than the factory tube is supposed to be. Good news is, I happen to have some copper tube around. It's of a larger diameter. I just didn't want to use it on here because I didn't think it was going to be necessary to go bigger because bigger isn't always better. Not in this case, especially not with a small car like little Eleanor here. But we're going to try putting a bigger tube on it and try pulling a cable in and out of it. Um, we're also going to lube the inside of it a little better than what we've got in here. Because I don't want that steel cable to eventually erode through the copper and, and that probably will happen. Because copper is incredibly soft compared to steel. And metal on metal is highly abrasive. Now I could probably put some kind of a Teflon tube or something through it or just even a plastic tube and allow it to slide in and out and that. And that might last a whole lot longer, but I think it's kind of going overkill. I don't think that's what we're going to do here. So anyway, I'm going to start digging through my crap and I'm going to pull out the copper line that I know that I have. That's of a larger diameter and hopefully it's not too big. Maybe we'll get that laid in here. And after talking to Don, about where I drilled that hole in there. I got a feeling that maybe, maybe I put it in the wrong location. It's all the way right there. I drilled the hole and it might be wrong. <laughs> Early 60s Beatles had the cable run up through the same hole, but then it ran alongside the gas tank in a straight shot poof, right into the, um, the bulkhead. And then that the pull lever, would, pull lever is not even a lever, the pull knob would be right underneath there, kind of in the same location, just about in the same spot. But on the earlier 56s, they ran all the way around the fender bolts and up around the inside, which I like more. I think is a whole lot more elegant, neater, cleaner, a little more streamlined because I don't want crap all over this area. Like the headlight wires and stuff, I don't want them there. I'll run them underneath. I don't care if I have to make longer wires, I will route them around. So this trunk is going to be barren. There's not going to be a whole lot of crap running through here at all, except maybe a breather tube, which I have not installed yet on here. I'm going to have to actually drill and tap that. I should have welded a bung on there for it previously, but I did not. But I'll come up with something. All the wires and everything are all going to be hidden up underneath the cover behind there. Except for something that I can't hide, and that's going to be the fuel sender. And uh, other than that, I think everything's going to be pretty, pretty well hidden away. All these little holes here where the wires run through, where typically the headlight wires would go, or your turn signal wires in the higher location here. I'm just going to find a rubber grommet that's the same size, and we're just going to cap it off and be done with it. Don't need anything too fancy, don't need anything too ridiculous. And right there is one such hole, is for the speedometer cable. Now, something I forgot, and that's that 1956 Beetles have a speedometer cable tube. So I guess we're going to make another one out of copper, that will extend itself out of that hole and up to the speedometer. Now I haven't decided what I want to do for a speedometer yet, but I want to try to keep it looking as period as possible. So I don't want to like, like put some decoded digital gauges or some ridiculous shit in there. But I think a good speedometer or something even vintage looking from this period, I don't want to put a later one in that has all the extra bells and whistles in it. Uh, if I could find a retro one, and there are some, some retro ones from the period that they have added um, a gas tank fuel gauge and stuff to it. Maybe I'll consider one of those, but I haven't committed to it yet and I don't have to. I've also got some ideas for some other very period um, East German technologies, if you will. Yeah, that's right, for the Soviet side. But it's stuff that didn't exist in the West, but it would look cool on this car nonetheless because it is period, even though it is from the neighboring country, kinda. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. All right, well, let me start digging out some tubes and see what I can come up with. Well, this roll of copper that I have here um, from another project, household project, <laughs> might actually be the right diameter. And you can tell because it's a little shiny because it pushes right in there. It fits perfectly. So this is what we're gonna use. And I don't think it looks too big or too bad, uh, being that it's probably the right diameter. And I think that's just what we're gonna go with. Winner. That makes me very, very happy. Oh yeah! Pull this sucker back down. It'll be delicate so you don't scratch up the paint. 
good news is the copper, as I said, is relatively soft. But I don't know how that compares to the um, clear coat that was on here. In fact, a good hardness test might actually be an interesting uh, demonstration. It's certainly not harder than a steel wire, though. That's for sure. There it is. You got it out. So that's how long it needs to be. I guess I'm too close to the damn camera. That's how long it needs to be, and that's the general shape. All right, that copper line you see there on the ground is what we need to copy. So I'm going to unwind some of this. This stuff has kept its uh, orange color, that coppery, beautiful color, better than the other stuff did. But eventually, in time, I imagine it will patina, and that's actually a definition of patina, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, what copper does, not what steel does, not what wood does, although that definition has been... Um, I guess bastardized a little bit. But if I'm not mistaken, the definition of patina is what copper does. A little lesson for you there. Look it up if you want to. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but when is the duck man ever wrong? Seriously. Right? Am I right or am I right? Right, right, right. Right, 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 right. Okay. Here we go. That needs to be about that long. I'm going to cut it a little long on purpose and we'll snip it down further if we have to. Just a simple pipe or a tubing cutter is all we're going to use here on this. They make a nice straight cut. And then for whatever what it's worth, it, it will actually, um, flare is not the word. It, it won't have any burrs on it when it's done. I mean, it might be a little burr on the inside, but it's on the inside where it's not going to bother anything. Not on the outside where it's going to be ugly, right? You get a nice soft edge to it. See? Looks good. Alright, this is a whole lot bigger diameter. A whole lot bigger than the other one that we had. I'm going to put a little bit of a bend on the bottom of it. And then we're going to try to push that through first. Almost looks like I've done it before, huh? beating on the corner of the hood over here. Before I go any further, where that copper tube is coming up, I'm gonna mask off that region right there so we don't bash up that paint. These little magnets are great. I bought them for a science project that I was working on some years ago. In fact, I might have even been a teenager at the time. And I never got around to doing anything with it. But I've used them on this kind of stuff for things for a long time. They really come in handy and they're super strong. Probably it costs you five to ten times as much now. I bought them off of eBay and the seller sent me two boxes of them by accident. It was more expensive to send them back than to just keep them. So he told me just keep them. So I ended up with just a ton of them. And I love them. Always using them around the shop. Right. I'm to put this back in here now that we don't have to worry about the hood getting really banged up here. <sighs> Got too harsh of a bend in it. There we go. It's the harsher the bend, the less likely that cable is to slide on the inside. So 
while we're here, let's start feeding in the inner wire. All right, what you didn't see is I shot a little lube down the inside of it. Hopefully, for whatever it's worth, I might make it a little smoother to uh, actually, yeah, a lot smoother. Hell yeah, that was definitely the right answer. That went in easy. Yeah, you want it to move real, real. Yeah, that's gonna work. <laughs> All right. Before I hit that record button, kind of stuck it in the hole, and it just, it just went. Just send it, as they say, send it. And it's sent. <laughs> a couple of, uh, lack of a better term, kink is probably the best word, but weep, because that's what it looks like. Weep, 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 weep. <laughs> so we're gonna get this all tucked in here like this. And I think how we're gonna attach it because ordinarily this would be welded in. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull the tube out just a little bit, put a little hot glue behind it and just press it in. Simple, keep it simple. Not gonna do anything that's gonna mess up the paint. We're not gonna try to weld. We're not gonna try to make some kind of bracket. We keep it really simple. And I guess we can take this off of here now. And I actually left this in the video because I know people would appreciate the fact that uh, I'm taking care of the beautiful paintwork on this car without taking any shortcuts here. I feel like there's another magnet under here. There is. And that was all of them, I think. Yep, nothing else is sticking to it. Good. Now there it is. All right. Still don't like the color of that receiver, though. That gold is bullshit. Might get painted black, or I might just uh, try to strip the um, chromate out of it. Chromate, chromium, chrome. From a ding -a -dong. Whatever it is, it's going away. Yeah, it's getting dark a little faster than I thought it would, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that copper tube and we're gonna put the original handle back into it, just like this. And this handle does look a little beat up and worn, but it's just, it's covered in tree sap and dirt, so I'm gonna clean it off real good. But what we're gonna do in here is we're going to um, probably grind this so it's flat instead of round, and I'm gonna drill a little hole through it, and then I'll run the cable through it and back and twist it, and then run it back through into the copper like that so that way I have something to pull on and in the event it breaks I'll just pull it out and replace it and the best part about that steel wire that I use it only costs probably about a dollar or two to replace it so unlike replacing the whole hood handle it's not going to cost me nearly as much it's also a much heavier gauge of cable so it might actually last me a whole lot longer in fact I use that same cable that I'm putting in here on the heater um, the heater boxes on um, Ruby so I actually use the same cable on the heater boxes on Ruby and it's lasted me now probably about 10 years without any failure and they just work so anyway this is what we're gonna do I think that's gonna be good but we're gonna save that for when the Sun comes back up yep well we got the hood release working how about that how about it out of beautiful copper parts still need to do a little bit of work about getting the little um, receiver portion that goes on the front apron there properly cleaned up coated maybe blacked out I just do not like the color of the chromium it's just uh, that weird gold greenish orange kind of crap it contrasts with not even contrast it clashes with everything else on this car that copper that I put on it doesn't look good against the stainless steel it doesn't look good against Eleanor's paint it needs to be cleaned up and removed same with the neighbor's revving the engine and I'm sure he says the same crap about me, but there's nobody else recording videos. So I guess that's it for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. It's basically carbon fiber, carbon fiber wallet. It's right there. I thought I lost my money. You lost <laughs> money. Ah!